my name is Paige. Welcome to my October TBR jar. So this video is going to be a little bit more low key and not as high energy because I have a trip coming up and I thought I was leaving tomorrow at 5.30 in the afternoon and I'm actually leaving at 1 in the afternoon. So I've lost a lot of packing time and I have a lot to do and I tried to start this video twice and I have just been stumbling over every single word that I want to say. So if I'm going a little bit slower than usual, I'm sorry, but I am a little overwhelmed with the needing to pack and also trying to make sure I have videos that are scheduled and ready to go out next week while I'm away. So I have a checklist right here of things that I need to talk about. If you see me looking down, that is what I'm going to be talking about but last month I tried to do Becca's book -thon and I don't know what books I was supposed to read but I know I was supposed to read six of them and I'm pretty sure I DNF'd three of them so I literally just remembered what my sixth one was so I was supposed to read Shadows of Self or was it Alloy, Alloy of the Law? One of the Brandon Sanderson books. If it was Alloy of Law, I did read that. If it was Shadows of Self, I have not read that. I was also supposed to read Red Rising, DNF that after like 5%. I was supposed to read Renegades, DNF that after 22%. I was supposed to read The City We Became and I DNF that after like 10%. And I was supposed to read The Bookish Life of Nina Hill, and I have not even started that book yet. But I did read Dread Nation, which was one of the Bokopathon books. So I'm not entirely in a reading slump, but all I want to read recently is fan fiction. I think I read maybe 40 to 50 fan fictions within the first week of the month. It is all that I wanted to do. I think I've just been slightly overwhelmed with like personal life stuff and feeling very busy all the time. So fan fiction is really my ultimate escapism and I haven't really been enjoying reading audiobooks at work either. I've picked up a few, stopped reading them halfway through, but that was also like Renegades, Red Rising, and The City We Became. I just wasn't really feeling them, so my TBR for last month was not great, but I have really been reading, and I don't have to take any punishments because Bookopalathon is not my own TBR jar game, so that is my update on my September reading, but I have a few updates to my TBR game. I completed my game in last month's video and I was able to get a book buying spree and I think my last video was my book haul if I am getting my timelines correct but I also asked in that video if I should update my board game a little bit add a couple of different elements to it and I got a couple of suggestions here and there and so I've only done a couple of things just because again I've ran out of time and have not been able to sit down and do a lot of things that I wanted to do but some updates that I did make was that I have put numbers on each of the spaces so now I know that there are 55 spaces I didn't know that before <laughs> And I have also added a couple of stickers. You can maybe see them shining right now. So the hands holding the moon and the Saturn hand ones are kind of meant to be like candy lands. So if I land on one of them, I get to jump ahead. But also if I am on the further down the board game one, I will have to move backwards. So it's just a little element of danger, I guess, for landing on those spaces. And then the book I just thought was really pretty and I put it at the end to signify my reward that we will get. But I'm excited with how it turned out. I'm excited to see if those spaces impact the game at all. But I think it took me probably about a year to complete my board game. I don't know if I was consistently reading every single month though, and I wasn't reading nearly as much as I'm currently reading. So who knows, it might be less than a year this time that we can get all the way to the end. But thank you to everyone who messaged me on Instagram about those suggestions for what I could do. I really appreciate the help. Next up on my checklist, I want to tell you what the Story Continue book club is reading. So myself and my friend, Rena at Read the Riot. We host the Story Continue book club and we host that over on Discord and it's a very laid-back low-key book club that has just a few people who want to read books that are based on either fan fiction, fan fiction tropes, or even retellings. Books that we've read in the past have been The Love Hypothesis, we read Point Pleasant, we read Daughter of the Moon Goddess, and last month we read A Study in Charlotte and we have all had 
varying opinions on that book. Um, maybe not varying. We have all had opinions on that book, but it's just a place for us to read books at our own pace and talk about what we are liking and disliking about them, and it's really fun. I really enjoy being over in that Discord. You don't have to join the book club to be a part of the Discord, but I am here for the book club quarter four announcements. For October, we are going to be reading Every Heart a Doorway, and Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shauna McGuire. So we decided to go with two books for the month of October, mostly because everyone talks about these two books in tandem. Some people say to start with this one, some people say to start with this one, and I feel like I've heard that these books play off of each other. So the events that happen in this are also happening in this book and it's a mixed bag on which book people enjoy more. So I've heard amazing things about this entire series and we are just so excited to get to these books. I cannot wait. For November we will be reading She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. This was the second most voted for book in our poll that we put out for everyone to vote for and I believe that this one is if not a Mulan retelling, it has Mulan-esque elements to it, so that is why we picked that one. And to end out the year in December, we are going to be reading A Spindle Splintered by Alex E. Harrow, and I believe that this is a very short, possibly sapphic, Sleeping Beauty retelling. And we are very excited to get to this one, and we thought that at the end of the year it would be nice to have a short little 120 page book to get us through and make sure we hit our reading goals. So if you are interested in any of those books, we would love to have you join us. The link to the Discord is in the description, and you don't have to be a part of the book club, like I have said, to join. You can join as a fun bun, which just means that you have access to the general chat, and you can also join us for reading sprints and movie nights. We might not have them all scheduled out and be consistent with them always, but we do have them over there sometimes. We also have a custom role that is for our readathon, so if there is a readathon in the future, which we don't currently have one planned yet, but when we do, you will also be the first to know if we have one scheduled. But it's a fun time over there. It's really relaxed. We talk about so many random things, including Disneyland. We share a lot of Disneyland and Disneyland Paris and Disney World pictures over there. So it's just a fun time and a really relaxed group of people. So I really love it over there. I hope that you join our book club. And my sticky note tells me that I need to talk to you about the readathons I'm going to try this month. So I am going to try and do two. The main one I'm going to be doing is the Trick or Treatathon. I hope I'm saying that correctly, but I am on Team Magic. I am so excited to be there. Caitlin from The Lit Review is a host, and I watched a video and immediately jumped on, and that will be probably what I'm basing most of my TBR this month on, because for that readathon, we are going to be picking 24 books. 24! 24. 24! We don't have to read all of them. But I have to pick 24 books so that I can get some bingos and win some points for my team. So if you are interested in the Trick or Treatathon, I will link Caitlin's video in the description so you can watch it and maybe try and join Team Magic because we are gonna win. But for another readathon I'm going to try and do, that is the Stabathon. And there are about six or so prompts for that one that I'm going to also try and incorporate with the Trick or Treatathon as well as my TBR jar. So let's get into what I'm reading. As I said, 24 books for the Trick or Treatathon. I decided to place them all on the shelf right here so that when I pull my TBR jar prompts, we can try and make sure to pull from that one first. So, like every other month that I have done my TBR jar, I'm going to pour, pour? pull four prompts from my jar and hope that they can fit into the TBR that I have already kind of curated for myself. And if not, things will get very sad for me in the month of October. I have not added any new cards to my stack yet. I just, again, haven't had any time. So you might see a lot of duplicates, you might not. And this card game also has the potential to make me draw extra prompts. And that would make me very, very sad if that happened. But we are just going to put all of our positive energy. I just dropped a few cards. We're gonna ignore them. They, they aren't meant to be all the positive energy into this. All right, you saw me shuffle. I'm going to shove those into my jar and we are just going to start pulling. Prompt number one is to draw an extra prompt. This game hates me. Lovely. All right, five prompts. Prompt number one is an anticipated read. 
I have about 400 of those right now. So let me pick one of them. And the winner is I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Everyone is reading this. Everyone is obsessed with it. And I want to start it immediately. I have been holding off, hoping I can fit it into my October TBR. And we are here. The time has come. This is probably my most anticipated of the moment. So I'm so excited I got this prompt. Okay, prompt number two. Do I want that one? I guess my finger is stuck on it. A random letter for the title. This could go very awry, very, very awry. I'm not screen recording this because I hate opening it, but we are going to go a random. Did I say I hate opening it? I mean, I hate editing it in because I always forget or it just looks a little silly. So it starts off with the letter R. I will try and put that very, very close. I guess it would be easier to edit this, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, let's hit randomize. And I think that's a D. Is it a D? It's a B. <laughs> I was backwards. All right, B. I have one. I have one. This couldn't have worked out better. I am going to be reading The Bone Maker by Sarah Beth Durst. Jessie from The Bookish Mom recommended this to me. It is part of a two part series where I'm trying to read books my friend recommended to me from Instagram, and this one was. And so I need to fit this into next month's TBR so that I keep up with that video idea. <laughs> Am I making any sense? No, I'm just super excited. Let me read the back real quick to refresh my memory on what it's about and let you know what it is. Actually, I'm just going to read it to you because I read the back of it and I am obsessed with it. 25 years ago, five heroes risked their lives to defeat the bone maker, Eklor, a corrupt magician who created an inhumane army using animal bones. But victory came at a tragic price. Only four of the heroes survived. Since then, Kreia, the group's leader, has exiled herself to a remote tower and devoted herself to one purpose, resurrecting her dead husband. But such task requires both a cache of human bones and a sacrifice. For each day he lives, she will live one less. Kreia would rather live one year with her husband than a hundred without him, but using human bones for magic is illegal in Boss. The dead are burned, as are any bone workers who violate the law. Yet Kreia knows where she can find bones she needs, in the battlefield where her husband and the countless others lost their lives. But defying the laws of the land exposes a terrible possibility. Maybe the dead don't rest in peace after all. Five warriors, one broken, one gone soft, one pursuing a simple life, one stuck in the past, and one who should be dead. Their story should have been finished, but evil doesn't stop just because someone once said, the end. It sounds so fucking good. It sounds so good. And Jesse, I'm so glad that you recommended this to me. I am so eager to read this one. And I'm so glad the random letter title generator picked B. I'm so happy. <laughs> Prompt three of five. How does this game know? TJ Klune. Okay. Okay. So I don't have the book in my hand right now. It's all the way across the room and I would knock over my tripod if I went to go get it. But for the trick or treat-a-thon, one of the prompts is to reread a favorite. And I was planning to read The Lightning Stroke Heart. I want to continue on with the series. I want to make sure I get fairy tales for, from Verania Red and the Damning Stone Red. And so I figured I might as well start my reread now, read a couple in the month, maybe read in November and December the rest of the series. And so book one is going to be on my TBR for the Trick or treat -a and this is perfect. This is perfect. Thank you, TJ Klune. Thank you, TBR Jar. Maybe the five prompts isn't a big deal. Maybe this was meant to be. I was putting all of the good energy into the card, so maybe it was all meant to be. Okay, keeping with the positive vibes, let's pull prompt number four, and it's going to be a Discord picks. So I need to post a little poll on Discord. Okay, I'm gonna be fully honest with you. I have to have this video edited, uploaded, and scheduled by tonight, and I don't think I have enough time to have somebody pick this. I am going to quickly ping, I don't wanna ping them, it's very late. Um, I'm going to jump onto my Discord and see if anybody is on and have them pick from the shelf because I have to have this video out and ready tonight. So we're gonna, we're gonna, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I'm sorry if this is like kind of cheating, but 
sometimes the TBR jar is is not kind. Maybe it'll make me draw an extra prompt for this. <laughs> Okay, I've posted a picture to Discord. I feel like it's a little cheaty to have them pick from the shelf, but I don't have time to <laughs> um, wait for them to pick a from a poll or something. So that's four prompts. I need to grab a fifth one and we'll see if the game is mad at me for kind of doing a little cheaty cheat. <laughs> but for our fifth prompt, we have a movie or TV adaptation and I have the perfect book for this. <laughs> Okay, Serena says, I'm here, not sober, but I'll pick. And she is now looking at my picture to pick something. But in the meantime, hopefully she doesn't pick this book that I'm about to pull. But for a movie or TV, uh, TV, TV adaptation, we are going to grab my best friend's exorcism because the TV series, or is it a movie, is coming out on some streaming service. And... Serena has officially responded, so I will let you know what that book is in a second. But I have been eagerly wanting to read this book for a number of reasons. First of all, cover, amazing. Probably my favorite cover of all time. Secondly, Audible Plus has this for free for the next couple of months, maybe until the end of October. And I figured, hey, a free audiobook, might as well give it a go. A third reason was that Lexi from is it just Alexandra Roslin? She read this book and said that it was like super emotional. She loved it. I think she might have cried while she was reading it and I love her book recommendations. So I figured another reason to read this. And with the TV and or um, movie, I think it's a TV show that is coming out. Come on, come on. All signs point to reading this book. And also another friend just read it and gave it like four or five stars. So I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> um, um, future page interrupting because I didn't read what this one was about. Sorry, hold on. <laughs> High school sophomores Abby and Gretchen have been best friends since fourth grade, but after an evening of skinny dipping goes disastrously wrong, Gretchen begins to act different. She's moody, she's irritable, and bizarre incidents keep happening whenever she's nearby. Abby's investigation leads her to some startling discoveries, and by the time their story reaches its terrifying conclusion, the fate of Abby and Gretchen will be determined by a single question. Is their friendship powerful enough to beat the devil? All right, back to the drawings. Back to the Discord. Oh, if you can see my bruise, I ran into a door. I think it was the door handle. I don't really remember. It was just there one day and I thought it was very strange. But back to the Discord pick. Serena went ahead and picked Lock Every Door by Riley Sager with this lovely used book sticker right on the cover. Okay, now that we are de-stickered, this one is about something I don't really know. I think it's about a haunted house, spooky spooky vibes. I have heard that this is some people's favorite Riley Sager. I don't think I've ever heard that this is somebody's least favorite. So I'm uncertain where this one is going to take me. I have only read one Riley Sager, which was Final Girls, and I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it four stars, but people say that's his weakest. So I don't know where I'm going to stand on this one. I also have Home Before Dark that I want to read as well if I can fit it in in the month, but I have the physical copy of this one and I am excited to give it a go. Part of me wants to take it on my plane, but it won't fall within the readathon. So we're gonna hold off until October and I'm excited. This one says, after responding to a mysterious newspaper advertisement, Jules Larson gets a job as an apartment sitter at the Bartholomew, one of Manhattan's most famous and secretive buildings. At first, the extravagance of the Bartholomew feels like a lucky break for recently heartbroken and penniless Jules, who has been haunted by misfortune for most of her life. But when a fellow apartment sitter in the building goes missing, Jules begins to suspect there are dark forces at work behind the Bartholomew's glamorous facade. Digging deeper into the building's past, Jules soon realizes that the Bar Bartholomew <laughs> is more dangerous than she thought and that escape may be impossible. So, pardon me for stumbling over Bartholomew. <laughs> Bartholomew. Barth, I still can't say that. But it sounds like a spooky apartment instead of a haunted house. But it still sounds really, really fun. And I am excited to get to this one. All right, so these are the five books that I'm going to be reading for my TBR jar. I am very thankful that they are all going to be able to fit into all of the readathons that I'm planning. But recap. I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy, The Lightning Struck Heart by TJ Klune, My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrick, The Bone Maker by Sarah Beth Durst, and Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. But like I said, 
those are not the only books I will be reading in October. Let me go through the other books. For a trick or treat a thon, here we go. These are what I'm going to try and pull from Lobizona by Romina Garber, Seance Tea Party by Romina Yi, It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey, The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware, Vicious by V.E. Schwab, The Inheritance Game by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, The Guest List by Lucy Foley, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. We already talked about these ones, but Every Harder Doorway and Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shona McGuire, The Train to Impossible Places by P.G. Bell, A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison, Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour, Giddy in the Ninth by Tamsin Muir, Moon Touch by Elizabeth Briggs, The Wicker King by Kate Ingram, The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sango Mandana, Shadows of Self by Brandon Sanderson, and A Million Little Pieces by James Frey. And like I said, I wanted to try out Stabathon. So for the prompts for that, we have Ghostface, which is a book with a villain point of view, and I am going to go with Vicious by V.E. Schwab for that one. The next prompt is Sydney Prescott, a final girl trope or a slasher. And for this one, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm going to go with Lucy Foley's The Guest List because I feel like our main character is a female and I'm gonna assume maybe that she's the only one that makes it out. I don't know. I know a lot of people die in this one, so it might not be a slasher, but maybe there is a final girl-esque element to it. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't read it yet. How am I supposed to know? The next prompt is Dewey and Gale, a romantic subplot. So, um... This was sold to me at Barnes & Noble by saying it's the gayest book they have ever read. So, Gideon the Ninth, I'm assuming with that summary is going to be slightly romantic in some aspects. I don't really know, but we're just gonna hope for the best, okay? I just really wanna read this and fit this into this prompt. <laughs> for the prompt of Jill Roberts, it's to read a YA thriller or retelling. And when you look the inheritance game up on Goodreads, it says, that it's categorized as a thriller on people's shelves so we're gonna call this a YA thriller. I don't know if that's correct but we're gonna go with it. And for the final prompt it's Tara Carpenter, a book with female relationships and we have to go with my best friend's exorcism for this one because they are best friends and they are female so prompt complete. So according to my sticky note we are almost done but those are the like four million books I will be trying to read in October. I hope that I have gotten over my fanfiction um, rabbit hole spiral that I was on in September, but I am genuinely so excited to get to these books. I think that even if I do want to also read fanfiction, I'm going to be reading a lot of these while I'm at work and I'm also not quite sure if this job is a forever sort of job. I was always in a temporary position but the possibility of me getting a new job is up in the air if they're going to keep me or not or if I'm going to go on a job hunt. So I may or may not have time off from work to read. If you have made it this far in the video, thank you so much. I just have one more little announcement for my next video coming out. I have been really trying to stick to Tuesday and Friday uploads but I might have to push my October bullet journal, which should be my next video, to a Wednesday upload just because of traveling back home, also doing some things with friends the next day, also having a interview to see if I have a position at my current workplace. So I might be a little bit busy, a lot of bit tired, so if you see a Wednesday upload, that is why. But other than that, I hope that this video was kind of fun. I know I twisted my rules just a teeny tiny bit to make prompts fit, but I still had fun. I'm still super excited to read these. Let me know if you have read any of these books and which ones you highly recommend for me to read. And if you have made it this far in the video, go ahead and leave me the pumpkin emoji so that I know that you are supporting me and just want to say hi. I know that coming up with comments is very, very difficult, so a pumpkin would make me very happy. But I now need to go import and edit all of these video clips, so I will see you in my next video, which might be that Tuesday or Wednesday bullet journal video. So thank you so much for being here, I appreciate you so much, and I will see you in my next one. Alright, bye!